everybody's gonna oh 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 everybody's gonna find something out about you all right everybody <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> right out of the cannon. <laughs> Welcome to the Fat and Homely Show. Um, <laughs> With Hammond <and> Pickle. <laughs> uh, so we're kind of in a, a, a pickle here. Um, we're anxiously awaiting our review from uh, another podcast, and, and we really wanted to record today and rebut today and send it. <laughs> rebut. <laughs> No matter what, she always comes into the conversation. <laughs> always. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, we wanted to. Uh, by she is is Roxy Ray. Um, uh, what, always, what else would you possibly mean by rebut? <laughs> <laughs> One butt isn't enough. We're gonna rebut. You know that would be a good uh, like a a medicine or something like a cream ass cream. So, like, once you get gaped or however the fuck they say once it. Once you, know, you get gaped. Get all stretched out. You just rub it on there and it shrinks it up, like, back to a balloon knot, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> Rebut. All right. That's pretty funny. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, I think we might we might end up putting out two episodes this week. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing shit a little different. We are going to record and put out the same day as opposed to waiting for 15 days like we have in the past. <laughs> so I know you got really used to everybody listening. I know you've gotten really used to uh, our high production value and all that. You, you won't be getting any of that anymore. Um, uh-uh. No more special effects. Yeah. We are going to shit these things out as quick as possible. <laughs> I think we should do the show all CGI. <laughs> I don't know how, but the whole thing CGI. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got a uh, more music for you. Uh, a guy by the name of Skinny Wizard. We'll talk more about him a little later. Um, right. But after the show, you should hear his newest song. Uh, and, of course, I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know what the fuck it is. Hold on. Skinny Wizard. Guy Like Me. Yeah. There guy we go. Like Me. Yeah, you're fucking cutting out, man. Fix your I head. am? Oh, fuck. Sorry. My internet sucks here. It's net neutrality, that's why. <laughs> yeah. If there's one positive of repealing net neutrality, it's that nobody's going to be able to hear us anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so what, you just want to jump into it, or do you got anything funny to, that well, happened in the last week, two weeks? Um, well, yeah, and so, I guess I guess it all depends on what you mean by funny. Yesterday we had a Christmas Christmas party with my in laws, and it was after I had every, everybody had been drinking. You know, they took these little uh, cars that they got for the kids. They got a steering wheel, and you kind of you kind of start them with just the steering wheel, no pedals or anything. You sit on them; they're real little. And we were racing them down the hill and like towards the river. <laughs> And uh, across the street, of course. So we had one person watching to see if any cars were coming. <laughs> and uh, so my turn came to race. And I got to the end, just about to go in the damn river. And and I, it should be fairly easy to um, stop. Hold on just a second. Did you have a stroke? My daughter came in here. What? I'm recording. What? what are We're recording. God damn it! <laughs> All right, I'll uh, take over. So Anthony was racing in a white Bronco, and <laughs> the uh, police were after me. <laughs> no, so so we got to the end of where if if I went any farther, I would have ended up in the goddamn river. And I, apparently, I'm not too smart. All I have to do is put my feet down. <laughs> But I, so I'm like, fuck, how do I stop this thing? So I turned the wheel <laughs> real sharp and it, this thing fucking flipped over and I fucking blah, 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 went tumbling down <laughs> and then, but I, but I won the race. So I had to race again. <clears throat> so I got back on and you would think I would learned the first time. Just put your fucking feet down when you're done. <laughs> so I got to the end and I fucking just. Turn the fucking wheel and fucking flip this thing over. And I landed straight on my goddamn knee, man. And 
it's fucking swollen up and I can't hardly walk and I feel so fucking old. Oh, God, I was I, so fucked up. I don't suppose anybody it's, recorded this, did they? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, actually, I think they did. I did. Let's so see put, if I can find that video. Yeah, put it on Twitter or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll try to get that video. I'm, I'm almost positive somebody recorded it because there was like 15 people and they were all laughing at me. <laughs> They're like, why didn't you just put your fucking feet down? And then the second time, they're like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. (laughs) Idiot. Idiot. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah, that's my stupid story. (laughs) Yeah, I I ain't got a whole lot. Uh, We had a... So I think I told you this in the... I don't know if I told you on the show or just on phone call, but we got this yard service here. Um, you pay like thirty five bucks a month, and they or thirty five bucks a week or whatever, and they come and mow and edge and yeah. all that shit. So yeah, normally it happens when I'm at work, and I I've never oh. seen it. So oh okay, it happened yesterday, which was Saturday, yeah. and I'm sitting out on my back porch. You know, it's like forty five, fifty degrees here or whatever. Yeah. Um, sitting on my back porch, and all of a sudden it's like I was infiltrated, like the Alamo man. <laughs> they're fucking there. There was Mexicans everywhere. They just all showed up. And there was like fucking leaf blowers and edgers and and two riding lawn mowers and a push lawn mower. I think they tilled a garden that, for thirty five <laughs> bucks. <laughs> so we we got a, we yeah. got a pretty good sized yard, you know. And there was like I don't know. I, I would say there's probably forty seven Mexicans up in in the front yard and twenty two of them in the backyard. And they, it was like had, had they decided that they were tired of doing yard work and they wanted to take over my house, I couldn't have stopped them. <laughs> So in reality, it was one, and you're just that racist that one Mexican is going to take over your house. <laughs> oh, I, I would say that there was probably six, six of them. Wow. Yeah, and, six and, of them. And I'm telling you, man, we're, they just, they just fucking swooped in and did my entire yard: the edging, leaf blowing, mowing, um, bag the grass, everything in 15 minutes. I mean, it was just like. <laughs> Did they even talk to you? No, no. They just show up and they all fucking scurry out of the vans. And they. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, oh my God. You don't give them a tip or anything? Or like, hey, uh, good job. <laughs> you don't. No, you I, sit- I, went, I went in the house and took cover. I didn't know what the fuck was going you, on. I've never experienced sit- it before. You sat in your rocking chair on your plantation and watched them work? <laughs> Harvest that grass. <laughs> Can't believe you. <laughs> oh, so I got I got probably the nicest. I know I have the nicest yard I've ever had, but it's <laughs> like it's damn near the nicest yard in the neighborhood. Really? And and I never knew how it was done before. You know, like I said, it just I come home from work and the fucking grass is mowed and it's edged all the way down the driveway and the sidewalks and they come once once a week. I or guess just whenever it needs it. I, 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 guess. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I told you I've never seen it before. All of a sudden, I my my yard was just overrun with Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've I'm assuming you've never paid anybody to mow your grass or anything on a regular basis before. No, no, I've never had a yard service before. Yeah, I've, I've either. I I I've paid kids to mow the grass, but they do it you know like a shitty, couple, <laughs> you know. This was, I mean, they're phenomenal Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> you, act, you act surprised. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't even know why you're making such a big deal about it. I mean, so they Because it's funny to me? They mowed Because you're, fu- the, you're fucking rich. I know you, and now you got people. You got people mowing your grass. <laughs> that's, that's amazing to me. <laughs> I've known I, you long enough to know that you have no... You you shouldn't have people mowing your grass. <laughs> I so I don't I don't call them my people. That's different. <laughs> you definitely should. I, I I wish I would have thought enough of it to record it. I mean, I, I wish I would have. <laughs> You're gonna how degrading is that? <laughs> Look at these guys work. No, I'm talking about like had they had they like. I assume the fucking van came. <laughs> Fly, flying down the road, you know, like anima, anima, and everybody's hanging out the windows and shit, and then the doors what open. The, fuck? <laughs> the You're doors not making yourself look any better. <laughs> the doors open, and and they all come out like a fucking yard army with leaf blowers and shit, you know, just full tilt. But uh-huh. I would I would have liked to record that. I mean, because it, it was like 
all of a sudden, you know, you hear the you hear a bunch of doors shut when from the van or whatever. Uh-huh. And then my yard was just overwhelmed with fucking leaf blowers and mowers and and shit and then just like that they're fucking gone again. I mean, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> <coughs> That's funny. <sighs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's funny. And that's why I'm against the wall. (laughs) That's why. (laughs) (sighs) All right. Me too. I'm against the wall too. What are we talking about? (laughs) So I was on the phone last night with uh, David, the producer. He he produces the Unrideable Rant podcast with Juliet Miranda. Yeah, Dave Miranda. Don't don't tell don't say somebody else's joke. That's not cool. <laughs> I, I, okay. I, th- I think we started calling him Mister Sister Fister. <laughs> anyway, so it was weird. I was I've talked to him now probably a dozen times on the phone. Some of them get pretty fucking lengthy. All right. Um, but I see. I was I was almost to the point where I thought that he really wasn't with Juliet because. Every time I talk to him, it's like, no, she's sleeping, or oh, she's gone, or she's whatever. Um, there so is I just no thought Juliet. he was full of shit. He's like a creeper that just <laughs> pretended to know her or something, you know. <laughs> uh-huh. But so last night he was talking about our uh, our reading of the Christmas uh, baby. It's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, and he said that uh, he walked in to the house and she was playing it on the house speakers of us doing the Christmas <laughs> song. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> and he's like, is, is that Doug and Anthony? And she's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and I told him about how I didn't think it was that good or whatever. And uh, he said, no, no, it's fucking great. You, it, it's good that you put it on there and left it in there or whatever. So anyway, uh, the whole point of the story is that he put me on speaker and then she started talking in the background. And hearing her voice come over the phone, you know, I listened to her every fucking week. It, it, I... I think I got starstruck. <laughs> I turned into a big dummy. <laughs> he, he's sitting there talking and, and he's like, uh, are you there? And I couldn't think of anything to say. It was like, holy shit. That's she's right there on the other side of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome. <laughs> are you there? Oh shit. All right. Yeah. So that was fun. That was, uh, so anyway, then, then, he took me off a speaker and and we went back to talking like normal. It's funny. I, I'm, I'm such a fucking <laughs> he went turd. Back to talking like normal. <laughs> like, you're you're right there, Doug. <laughs> fucking fawning over my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Nah, it's fucking weird, man. You sit here and listen to listen to her tell stories every week, and then she's on the phone. It's like I don't I don't know what to fucking say to her. <laughs> I should have just fucking celebrity, man. I should have just went into my creepy christmas voice (laughs) (laughs) you should have you should have said hey remember that time when we asked to see your butthole (laughs) you're a fucking celebrity remember that (laughs) (sighs) all right all right so this fucking recording sucks man um i mean what do you want to do just quit (laughs) <laughs> yeah, qu- I'm quitting life. <laughs> Fuck it. Don't do it, man. Stay away from the light. All right, then. It's all darkness for me, buddy. All right, so... Uh, I, we I, might I, as well give away that t-shirt while, while we're fucking... Oh, all right. Yeah, so yeah. insert cheesy random sound effect now to make it sound like we're doing a fucking ping pong ball drawing or something. And <laughs> <laughs> the winner is... <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> Uh, none other than Carly Kingsley. Uh, oh, I know her. Do you? No. She is a writer, a chef, a podcaster, an entertainer, and owner of Dirt Sugar Media. Oh, that's a cool name. Congratulate, and I think she's too high class to wear this shirt, but that's not my fucking problem. Why in the fuck would she enter then? I don't, I don't fucking care. Uh, she's, so, would see, you say high class. Why, why would, why would you say high class? Because uh, she's a writer and a chef. <laughs> well, you, you you think low class people don't write and cook? 
that's what they do. They they cook. They're not chef. They don't chef. They cook. <laughs> they don't chef. <laughs> I want her to call the fucking uh, hotline. The call our number uh, 508-974-4489. I want to know if you're high class. Yeah. All right. I so, don't know exactly. I don't know exactly how you're going to explain to your whether you're high class or not. But <laughs> have you ever put fruit? Nope. <laughs> 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 well, you're you're getting the shirt anyways, but I mean, you know, you might as well show us how low class you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Carly, we would appreciate it if you call the voicemail and tell us uh, something. I don't give a fuck what it is. Just interact. Fuck. Your I want. I just deepest, want to... deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> we won't it, tell nobody. It'll be, be just between us. <laughs> I won't even. I won't even tell Doug. I'll just listen to it, and I won't even tell Doug. Anyway, uh, so it's at Carly Kingsley on Twitter. Uh, congratulations on your fuck you shirt. And I, it sounds like we're going to be giving away another one here. <laughs> All uh, right. And I think it's, uh, he's got a new shirt coming out. I think I, I've seen the design and I want it. I wanted this one too, but <laughs> I did like 15. You did, but you, did, did, you didn't win? <laughs> I did like 15 random drawings just to <laughs> wait for my name to pop up. Uh-huh. All right. Well, that was fun. All much ado about nothing. No, no fanfare Something. or nothing. Uh, I know. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> so you know, we bitch about other podcasts playing cheesy audio drops. Uh huh. <laughs> we just make our own. <laughs> I'm like that guy from uh, fucking um, Fred from Howard Stern. Nope, I don't know who that is, but I'm talking uh, about the the original. Mike, fucking, Michael Winslow uh, from Police there Academy. There you go, Police Academy. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are just like do a gun. <laughs> All right, do, do a gun. Do a gunshot. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> See, do uh, uh, first time anal sex with a guitar. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> See, you really had an opportunity to show your skills, and you fucked it up. That was my. That's all the skills I got. I, I showed my skills. Uh, do the needle scratch. <laughs> doodle do. <laughs> oh fuck! That's where it went. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> all right. So here's what uh, we're gonna I'm going, do. I, I'm I'm quitting my fucking job. <laughs> that's I got a new career ahead of me. So I, I've got to think of a story to tell, and as I tell it, you're going to drop in sound effects. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, Kapow! <laughs> let me get to the fucking story. All right. All right, so I'll, I'll tell a story about a time that I knocked a guy out in the bar. <laughs> so you're fitting your story to my skill set. I like that. <laughs> all right, so... Um, all I'm going to do is narrate the story, okay? All right. Uh huh. And I'm going to tell it in the third person. So this is all. None of this is planned out. We didn't plan any of this, but I think it's going to. So be, it was you, another did, guy, and and oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I'll yeah, let you finish. Yeah. Uh, so it's, and you have to understand that we, me and Anthony, can barely hear each other because our audio keeps cutting out. Um, so this is going to be a fucking train wreck. But here we go. <laughs> all right. So I was at a bar with a buddy of mine and my wife, and. So feel free to just do sound effects. That's my drinking sound. <laughs> oh fuck. Why did I ever say I could do sound effects? Who the fuck what the fuck was I thinking? All right, so I was at a bar. And I was sitting. <laughs> I was sit, sit, so fucking sit, distracting. Sit. <laughs> All right. So there, I got to close my eyes. I'm sitting here trying to concentrate. All right. So there I was sitting at the bar. My wife was sitting across from me, and um, my hey, buddy was sitting that? at the table as well. And this guy walked up behind me. Yeah. What? Hey. <laughs> What? <laughs> the fuck are you? Are you are you doing your own show over there? <laughs> I'm making I'm making sound effects. <laughs> oh, okay. The best uh, way so I know walked, how. This guy walked up behind me, put his hand on my shoulder, and he, he looked down at me. He said, "Why don't you buy me a beer?" And you went, <clears throat> boing, 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 boing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this is going nowhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's let's abandon this while we still have a chance. <laughs> oh, this is all going in, but <laughs> but it, but we probably should just stop while we're ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll save that story for another show. Then uh, all right, this is hard with shitty connection and and awesome sound effects. <laughs> Maybe I'll write the story out so you can you can get the drops ready. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Maybe I'll hire somebody to do sound effects that knows how to do them. <laughs> All right. So a car went by. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Little kid sledding. Wee! <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. All right. <laughs> you ready to start this piece of shit? Uh, I, yeah, yes, yes, I, a piece of shit is about right. <laughs> this is fucking terrible. <laughs> Who the fuck wants to listen to this stupid bullshit? <laughs> I, 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 I'm not opposed to it. Oh, my God. Uh, All right, so I was poking around on uh, Everyday Feminism and came across a couple more good articles that I think we need to discuss. Good is a relative term. Relative. Absolutely right. So the first one here, and, and I apologize that we keep going down the same road of uh, feminism, racism, ableism, sexism, uh, cockism. I don't apologize. I officially, I officially don't apologize. All right. So the title of this article is 10 Things Every Intersectional Feminist Should Ask on a First Date. So <sighs> <laughs> the first and, thing... And, if we go on a first date and you mention the word intersectional, I'm out. And you're paying for dinner. I would have thought that that was like a piece of furniture in your living room. If you would if you would have said, are you intersectional or do you have an intersectional or whatever, I just assume that's three couches that go together to form an L. <laughs> Why is, but, okay. <laughs> what does that have to do with feminism? I don't know. Sometimes I like to lay in an L. I don't know. L for lesbian. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh All guys God. like to lay in an L. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So right off the bat, first question: this is this is what's going to be asked on the first date. <laughs> Do you believe that Black Lives Matter? <laughs> what kind of fucking <laughs> question is that? <laughs> hey, I'm Karen. Do you believe Black Lives Matter? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So obviously, there's only one right answer. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Who, 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 who's going to say no to that? Who's going to say no, black lives don't matter? And that, what's that have to do with feminism anyway? Yeah, exa- it's intersectionality. That's You're, you're missing I don't know the what intersectionality. that means. It's the intersection of feminism, racism, sexism, communism, capitalism. Lesbianism. Lesbianism. It's it's where it's where all of the social justice sisses meet. Okay, so yeah, first date, <laughs> first okay. question, first date, first question. Do you believe Black Lives Matter? <laughs> yes. All right. Next next question. <laughs> what are your thoughts on gender and sexual orientation? Um, uh, I think blonde chicks are pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're looking for? <laughs> How do you work to dismantle sexism and what's that word? Misogyny. Misogyny. <laughs> misogyny. <laughs> I'm going to disable this misogyny. <laughs> How do you disable misogyny in your life? I don't. <laughs> All right. Um, Does that end the date if you say I don't? <laughs> I have no your... <laughs> interest in dismantling misogyny or sexism. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here, we... So this one I think you and I are going to get on the same page with. What are your thoughts on sex workers? <laughs> <laughs> How much? <laughs> that's that's... <laughs> what, do, what do I owe you? <laughs> I think sex workers are great. So if you're... Uh, I guess I don't know what these people are called. So if you're a feminist, then you are supposed to be pro-sex worker. I think so. Yes. But then you're 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 supposed to be anti pornography. So the new thing that oh god. Oh, this brings up something else that pisses me off. 
So they are anti-pornography, but they are pro-erotica, which is feminist, feminist pornography. And that, that just pisses me off. Because they say any, any kind of pornography is sexist towards women. Which, in my opinion, takes away women's agency. Like, you're not allowed to be a woman and like to have sex. <laughs> and be filmed doing it. Mm. Mm. Are you a supporter of the BDS movement? Well, I don't know what boycott, thought... divest, saying. I don't know what that means. Oh, an, an effort to end international support for Israel's oppression of Palestine. <laughs> Palestinian. I, what the fuck? This is still the first date, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> What's your thoughts on the uh, uh, the oppression of Palestinians from Israel? <laughs> Check, please. <That's, laughs> I, I don't know. I Yes. <laughs> You know, I, I'm really glad that you brought me here. But uh, so what I'm what I'm really curious about is is what's your understanding of settle, settler colonialism and indigenous rights? <laughs> is that really what? What is your understanding? That it really is one of the questions. <laughs> what the fuck? Settler colonialism, like when they had the covered wagons and shit. <laughs> I think it's before that, like when we came into boats and took the land or something. My understanding is that boats float on water, like right? Boats float on water. Columbus sailed the ocean sea in 1993. <laughs> <laughs> Whoosh! Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that right? Columbus, wait, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in four, 1492. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> is that the right answer? <laughs> do you think capitalism is exploitive? I do. Okay, very good. So are we gonna bang? Are we gonna bang? So, so are we gonna fuck now? <laughs> yeah. So, like this whole thing here, I think I agree with. I'll, I'll take the time to read this one. Maybe I don't know. Anti-capitalism, especially in the U.S., is imperative if you have an understanding of systematic racism, the prison industrial complex, the Thirteenth Amendment, and exploitation capitalism. For one, teaches us that we are only valuable if we produce capital. That means that if you aren't contributing to the system with your labor, your life means almost nothing. I 100% agree with that. Yes. If your date says that they are anti-fascist and part of the resistance, but they're cool with exploiting labor from communities of color and they support the school-to-prison pipeline, then there's a good chance that they'll only value you for your ability to nurture them without any reciprocation. Who what? is going to say, I support the school-to-prison pipeline? <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. Hey, you know what I'm, you know what I'm for? <laughs> I'm for building a pipeline straight from the school to the prison. <laughs> but but no fracking. I don't I don't no know what that <laughs> We can't we can't frack near the prisons. That's what it is. <laughs> I can't frack within fifty yards of a school. <laughs> right. <clears throat> oh All my right. god. Can can any human be illegal? That's, is that no? I don't know. No, I'll I don't understand the question. I don't understand the question. <laughs> we live on. A I understand tiny, what they're getting at, but we live on a tiny, tiny planet with land and water within a galaxy surrounded by a universe with an inconceivable number of other galaxies and planets. Yet here we dictate where we are and who is allowed to be where we are. It's mind-boggling that borders are even a thing. So to call people aliens or illegal immigrants is so inhumane and despicable. White Americans stole this land, uh, colonized this land, created so many borders, pushed out, killed, and enslaved people of color, and somehow they have the audacity to claim that this land is theirs and that black and brown immigrants are stealing their jobs, land, and homes. Miss me with that bullshit. So I'll, first off, I would just want to say that I, as I started off with my story, I am pro-brown immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've established that. Okay. I support them. I support them mowing my grass. I, I think you literally do support them, don't you? You, you? you pay their wages. I'm good with now, it. it I, 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 the wording of this is retarded. It's written by a fucking 12-year-old. But I, on premise, I agree with it. The idea that we've split this up into, you know, 
this land is my land. That land is your land. <laughs> Am I supposed to stand up, put my hand over my heart? Y- yep, you sure are. <laughs> It seems it seems silly. It seems you know I uh, I don't know, but the way this is worded makes me disagree with you. Just because I think you're stupid. I, I I you could get your point across a lot better if you would just not be stupid. <laughs> Very good. And this isn't first date bullshit. <laughs> first date is like uh, I don't even I haven't been on a first date in fucking twenty years, so I don't even know. But first date's like. So, do you like stuff? Ice what, cream? What's your thoughts on <laughs> Kevin Smith movies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. What's your thought on Kevin Smith movies? What kind of music are you into? Do you support Muslim Americans and non-Muslim people from Islamic countries? Support them how? Like, give them money? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't think of any other religion which has been verified and lied about more than Islam in a cultural and systematic way. I'm not a Muslim. So I will stay in my lane, but I cannot oh, imagine Christ. for a second. <laughs> but I cannot imagine for a second even claiming to be a feminist if I didn't stand in solidarity with my Muslim friends and family, especially now after nine eleven. Don't, don't waste your t- don't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to stop you. But don't they rape Muslim women for like showing their faces in public? And if they get raped, don't they kill them for being raped? <laughs> isn't that, I mean? Isn't that how it works? Am I wrong about that? I don't know. Like I've, you got raped. I've never been to you Muslim. got raped. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can tell that we're two educated people talking about this subject here. <laughs> so I think that if you if you're a woman and you show your face to another woman or to a man or something, they kill you and then they rape your dead body and then <laughs> is that true? I don't and then they kill your kids, right? I don't fuck I don't know. <laughs> Feminism and and Islam and Muslimism don't go hand in hand. I mean, would you agree with that? I don't know. I don't know anything about it other than uh, I don't. I I know that I know some Muslims, and I know that they've never raped me. And as far as I know, they've never <laughs> raped anybody else. Perfect. That's that's what I know. I'm not talking about American Muslims. Oh, oh yeah. Well, fuck the other ones. <laughs> I'm talking about real ones. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't waste your time Sorry. and energy on Go dating ahead. someone who thinks that Islam is inherently violent or misogynistic. Uh, that's, that's like literally what I just said. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, instead, read some Huda Sharati or Mona at the What the fuck is that? <laughs> to educate what the fuck does yourself that mean? further on Muslim feminism. Muslim feminism. All right. I'm assuming if I can't even read their name, how am I going to read what they wrote? <laughs> does your allyship? What's it? Does your allyship include disabled yeah. folks? Allyship. What the fuck is an allyship? If you're um, white, but you support people that aren't white, which we've at, established like, that I do. Yeah. Do, does it include? So you're an ally. Are you an ally? I don't think you are. I I am. I, I support. Like 15 Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> You're an ally. You support 15 Mexicans. All right. I'll give you that. God. We're going to social justice hell for this one. I I don't think that we're saying anything wrong at all. You don't Obviously. Think so? No. No. Well, I mean, no. I, I mean, I, I think what I'm saying is right, but it's just an, a very unpopular opinion. All right. So, and al- especially even more unpopular since I'm white and male and straight and not transgendered. So, allyship is people you align yourself with. It is the the a person from a majority group who is in support of minority groups. So that's us. Yeah, but it's it's not. If you ask anybody, we we are the opposite of allies. <laughs> we are not Allies, according to them, allies are supposed to um, put ourselves second in the conversation and uplift um, black and brown voices. You know, like let them talk and st- we're supposed to stay in our lane type of shit. You know what that, I mean? And that's what we do. I'm not in anybody else's lane. And we both believe that everybody should have the same rights. Right? Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that 
to the true sense of the term, we're allies. But right. according to, you know, everyday feminism, we are anti-allies. D- don't think that, that I'm going to start wearing or put like some faggy rainbow bumper sticker on my car, though. I'm not that much of an ally. Would you wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt? Not here. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> not here? What does that mean? There's a lot of black people here. <laughs> don't their lives matter? Yes. So does mine, and I don't want to get shot. So would you wear a White Lives Matter t-shirt? No. Again, what? don't want to get what? shot. <laughs> so what? You can't... Nobody's lives matters there? You, if anybody's lives matter, you get shot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking know. a stand publicly for anybody's lives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so would you would you wear a... I wouldn't even wear a, a Doug's Life Matter shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's Life Matter. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I would. <laughs> Doug's life matters. <laughs> so do you... Okay, would you wear a Black Lives Matter shirt? No. Why not? Because I think that movement is stupid. I don't know. Nah, I, I disagree with you. I think the movement's all right. Uh, where it's at now is not, but the premise of it is all right. The The idea behind it was noble and good, but they went astray, so... I, right. I believe I believe that that we should have a conversation about police shooting unarmed black people, but we shouldn't have that conversation at the expense of um, logic <laughs> and and reasoning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we know black. Everybody knows Black Lives Matter. I understand that, but when you get mad when people say White Lives Matter, what do you think is going to happen if you start a movement saying Black Lives Matter? What do you think is going to happen? People right. are going to say, well, white lives matter. And then you get mad about that. And then it turns into not talking about police murdering black people. It turns into a race issue. <sighs> Come on. Be a but little you, smarter. You're arguing my point, though. So anybody, when, when the movement first started and they said black lives matter, they weren't saying white lives don't matter. They were saying black lives matter as much as, as everybody else's. And that's right. all they were saying. Right. There was nobody ever questioning whether or not white lives matters. I think we've established that uh, that for the most part they do, right? Right. But so, when you say white lives matter, people there's no think there's no reason to say that. Why jump on? There's no reason to say black lives matter. There there is if they're being dismissed all the time and like as you I mean you're the one that said black people getting shot left and right by being unarmed by cops every day in every I I, city. I think that that's something we should talk about. <laughs> I think that that's this never happened in my city. Wait, maybe it has. Yes, it know. has. <laughs> has it? I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, I I think that that's a conversation we should have. But instead of having that conversation, what we're doing is well, let's talk about how white lives and black lives are different. Blah 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 blah. Let's let's muddy. Hoobly the hoobly hoobly. Let's <laughs> exactly. Let's muddy the conversation with as much bullshit as we can instead of talking about what we want to talk you're the, about. But you're the one muddying the conversation. So Me? if if yes, you specifically. <laughs> if <laughs> if somebody says black lives matter, yes. there shouldn't be a, there shouldn't be a yeah but. It's just I agree they do. And okay. That's the but end if, of it. and if somebody says white lives matter, but that's a yeah, but why? But, why? What the fuck are you talking about? That is fucking pure racism. No, it, it's not. If I say, is is it okay to be white, Doug? I think we've established that. I think it is for the most part. Yes. <laughs> for the most part, yes. <laughs> yeah. You are a fucking racist piece of shit. So I I've got to keep all the doors open. So when we become the minority, I can say I'm with you, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my God! Yeah, you're. I think I think that you are actually the racist one. Um, there, there's absolutely no because I think everybody say, should be equal. Yeah, and as do I. There, there's nothing wrong with that. And and but there, there's no reason. So to, so we get no people equal to, by no bringing reason, white people down. There's no reason to bring white people down. Nobody's talking about bringing white people down except for you, Hitler. White <laughs> white lives matter. Yeah, okay. but. That's fucking racist. No, you're the yeah, but <laughs> you, you just, <laughs> you're the yeah, but I'm going to rebut this. <laughs> Get some so of that fucking you, anal cream. You just said it. You just said 
if you say Black Lives Matter, there's no yeah but. But if you say White Lives Matter, there's a yeah but. That's not what Fuck I said. That. That's, That's exactly what, what you said. No, it's not. What I said is if somebody says Black Lives Matter, just say, okay, I agree, they do. They're, and then you, when somebody says White Lives Matter, what should you say? Okay, they do. D- then we're on the same fucking page. Yes. But that's not what you said a no, few minutes what, ago. No, what I said the yeah but about was if somebody says black lives matter and then somebody like Anthony comes along and says, yeah, but so do white lives. That's stupid. I never said that. That's what I was talking about. Why Fuck. is that stupid? Why is that You're stupid. stupid. Why, why is it stupid? You know what we haven't talked about? The fact that your mom's nope. a whore. <laughs> My mom's life matters, okay? <laughs> yeah, but so does mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking racist. All right. Oh, anyway, so number 10. Does your allyship, allyship <laughs> include disabled folks? As an able-bodied woman, again, I will stay in my lane, but intersectionality has to include a solid platform for disabled to get it because their wheelchairs are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you know she made that joke on purpose. <laughs> and not just for the visible disabilities. If you have a disabled family or friends, if you have disabled family or friends, please make the effort to listen and learn about their lives and their experiences. Disabled folks are subject to shaming and violence because humans are awful and lack empathy. Be, be mindful of others who mock disabled people. That kind of cruelty is inexcusable. On a date with someone who uses ableist slurs, walk away. <laughs> Roll away. <laughs> <laughs> Regulators, roll out. (laughs) So this says disabled folks are subject to shaming and violence because humans are awful and lack empathy. That is the most, the the truest statement out of this whole thing. You could have just cut off the very front of it right there. Shame because humans are awful and lack empathy. That's it right there. That sums up this whole fucking thing. Everybody is awful. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Next article. (laughs) So I would like to know. Yes. What drove that statement? Because I disagree with it. I disagree with the, with saying that I'm trying to find it now. Where did you read that at? I know I read it, but you read it. (laughs) The very last line of that, that story. Second to the last line, I guess. Oh, cruel. What? What? Where? I don't see it. My internet don't have that. <laughs> you need to get a different internet then. It's at the very bottom of that lo- the very bottom of that story. On a date with someone who uses ableist slurs, walk away. So a couple the- of lines before that. Well, then it's not the very last line, you dick. <laughs> <sighs> Sometimes. Okay, here we go. Disabled folks are subject to shaming and violence. When? It makes it sound like it's <laughs> like a, like there's, <laughs> you're gonna have to clue me in here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just I, like there's a whole gang of people, and they just go around and and beat up Crips. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're called Bloods. <laughs> Is that right? All right, I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> if you see somebody in a wheelchair. Is the first thing you think is, I want to push them over? I want to punch them in the side of their soft head. (laughs) Their soft head. He's in a wheelchair. He's got a soft head. His legs don't work. Obviously, he's retarded. If he wasn't retarded, he'd just use his legs. (laughs) I want to punch him right in his mushy head. (laughs) I don't think we're getting a date with this girl. God. Where's the mushy head sound effect? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not fucking it. I'm punching it. (laughs) Still mushy. You go, (laughs) kaplow! Oh, fuck. All right. Yeah, we didn't do very well on that first date. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Maybe the second one will be better. Uh, oh, all right. God. We'll jump to this one real quick. Again, this is from Everyday Feminism. Uh, 
Oh, this is a good one. Can Asian Americans appropriate their own culture? <laughs> <laughs> So cultural it, appropriation I, 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 is when somebody from one culture, like say a white person, uh, takes bits and pieces from another culture, say American Indians, and like I think we use the making dream weavers or dream catchers or dream <laughs> baskets or something. Dream right? baskets. So now this this article is asking if if like a Chinese American can. I guess if they dress like ninjas or something, if they're appropriate in <laughs> their own culture. Just, just on a regular basis. Just, just going to work and something. This guy's dressed like a ninja. Cool. <laughs> so I, 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 no, I'm not going to say that. Go ahead. All right. No, so, all right. <laughs> go ahead, caller. <laughs> As a U.S. born South Asian, I have found a lot of power in reclaiming the bin, bindi or bindi. What the, hell's, what the hell's a bindi? I don't know. I see it all the time. On, you see bindis all the time, but you don't know what it is? I see I see the word all the time on articles about cultural appropriation, so it must be important. All right, let's see if we can find and, out and what a cultural bindi appropriation. Is. I think it's like a throwing star. Uh, nope. <laughs> when when I wear a bindi, I think it's a throwing star. It, it's a dot on the forehead. <laughs> oh. All right. Significantly less funny than a throwing star. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a whole different type of. Uh, I lost my page here. Here we go. All right. Uh, I don't. I don't understand. I, so I don't want to read this article. I thought it was about people that wore throwing stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's not. <laughs> in a, in an article. Okay. Asians of the dis. God, there's so many words that I don't understand. Asians of the diaspora can reclaim our cultures at a distance. Asians of the. Maybe that's like a clan of ninjas. <laughs> Everything goes back to ninja. <laughs> Every word that you don't know is ninja, ninja, or or star, or something to do with ninjas or clan. <laughs> In an article for Black Girl Dangerous, South Asian artist and act activist Janani claims that South Asians have a lot more than Bollywood and Chai and Henna going for us. So diasporic South Asians need to quit. Orientalizing our cultures. What the fuck? What the fuck? Orientalizing? Is that a word? I think it means uh, martial arts. <laughs> Mar martial artsing? <laughs> quit, quit chopping this thing up. <laughs> <sighs> Asians of the diaspora selling our stereotypes for financial profit. Earliest 20th century U.S. born Chinese actress Anna Mae Wong was often cast in roles that exoticized and sexualized her as a stereotypical Oriental woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I think I'm going to bail out of this. This is stupid. If uh, there's just so much words that I that I don't understand. <laughs> there's so much words. <laughs> what the fuck is dias? Diasporic. What does diasporic mean? I thought Let's that was medicine you put on a burn. <laughs> Let's get into the two ways, two main ways that diasporic Asians are said to self stereotype. All right, self stereotype. Diasporic. I, I, got, I got to look it up. Diasporic Asian. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yes. The dispersion of the Jews beyond Israel. What? What? Uh, what the fuck does that mean? It means that the Jews are taking over the ninjas. <laughs> Jewish ninjas. We're going to have Jewish ninjas. Sweet. Uh, diaspora is a scattered population whose origin lies within a smaller geographic locale. Diaspora can also refer to the movement of the population from its original homeland. Do the, do the now you know sound effect. I don't know that one. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know that one. <laughs> the now you know sound effect. I don't know it. Fuck. Do you do you know it? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> See, your yours was just as good as mine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just copied yours. <laughs> I think that was the Howie Mandel effect. So, are we? Yeah, let's let's just bail on this, and let's okay. all decide that all ninjas matter. It's not all, 
Yes. All Asian ninjas, all Jewish ninjas, dias, diaphragm ninjas. <laughs> I'm a diaphragm ninja. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, all right. This is the last one, and then we're going to get the fuck out of here. I'm tired of this bullshit. Yeah. Fix your internet. Yeah, yeah. Me, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, I can hear you just fine, so I'm pretty sure it's your internet. All right, this one's gonna fuck. This is gonna take longer than I wanted to spend talking to you. Quite, <laughs> again, again, everydayfeminism.com. Go there for all your podcast needs for talking <laughs> about stupid shit. Please, please support them as much as you can. They need your help. All right, 22 examples of thin privilege. <laughs> so, me thin as privilege. I thought it was fat privilege. Oh no, you're right. Sorry, go ahead. So I think these are going to be pretty easy to refute. Um, All right. So I'll, I'll read the premise here. Through mass media, we have been bombarded with messages that the normal, in quotes, size is actually thin. And this assumption that you need to be thin in order to be okay and normal gets played out frequently for people who are bigger than normal. If you've been a normal size your whole life, you may never have thought of the benefits of being thin. But, oh, this is a word now? But <laughs> sizeism. Sizeism is very prevalent, and it's one of the most accepted isms in our society. Right. Except for jism. (laughs) It's time we make this ism unacceptable, and thus make the world a better place to live in for people of all shapes and sizes. The following are examples of thin privilege that those of us who are seen by society as being physically too big experience regularly in our lives. I can answer every single one of these with one phrase. Shut Shut up, up, you fat fatty. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) You... Just sh- shut up, lunchbox. <laughs> All right. All right. N- number one. You- so this is because I. So I haven't seen you in like a year or something. So are you fat? Are you thin now or what? Because I know you bounce around. <laughs> it bounce around. No, I have the babies. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm still fat, dude. Don't worry about it. Uh, but you're. I'm, okay, not, so- I'm not fat. I just I I carry all my weight in my gut. <laughs> I have a beer gut, and I don't even drink beer. All right. So I would say that uh, if we were to stand side by side, I would be considered obese, and you would be, with you standing next to me, you look thin, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's why we're friends. Okay, so for the sake of this conversation, then, so you're the pretty one? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know what's funny, and and we've never talked about this, is that people, I talked to, uh, quite a few people about the show and feedback and whatnot. And yeah. people are always surprised to hear that you and I have never hung out ever. Oh yeah. Never. I was, yeah, never. <laughs> I've, I've been to your house once. And that was when we tried recording after we'd been recording for a couple months. Yeah. Um, we went on a work trip together once yep. and we ran into each other in the casino one time on accident, and it was very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Like, we're not supposed to see each other on these terms. This, is, this isn't right. <laughs> yeah, that's you know that's really weird. We never have. I, I think I've been to your house once because a guy I know bought a car from you, and I took him to your house. I don't even think I let you in, did I? <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Nope, you barely let me in the driveway. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, ju- I just I think that's funny that like we we are each other's perfect friend because we don't need to see each other. <laughs> right. If you needed to hang out with me, we wouldn't be friends anymore. I can't handle that kind of pressure. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. I'm fucking serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, so what's funny is that you got upset when I moved away when I moved out of. Illinois and moved to North Carolina. I'm still you know, upset. But it's not like it didn't change anything at all. It changed nothing. You don't. Yeah, but. Yeah, but see, there's the yeah, but you racist <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Doug's life matters, man. I don't. It, it was it's it's a it was nice to know that you were just right next door. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, no, literally nothing changed. Like, <laughs> <sighs> All right, so let's get into the thin. So the whole point of that conversation, I think I was trying to get to, uh, I think you've probably experienced some of these, and you don't know what it's like for somebody of my girth to <laughs> to go through life. How come every time you say the word girth, I think of cock? Girth, girth, girth and cock go together, don't they? 
they do, and that's what I was talking about. Was oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I, and I can relate to all these because, it, you know, it wasn't that long ago, well, 10 or 15 years, that I was very, very thin and muscular, and now I'm very, very fat and round. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, you're not assumed to be unhealthy just because of your size. So, this is me talking to you, right? Nobody right. looks at you and says you're unhealthy just because you're thin. Right. <laughs> all can right. You, can you refute that? Anorexia is a thing. But you, you are definitely not anorexic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I, I can't refute. You're right. I can't refute that. Okay. And neither can I because people look at me and think that I'm unhealthy because I'm unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> As I pull up to a stop sign and I'm, I've got the large McDonald's fries and I'm dumping them into my fucking face hole. <laughs> Don't judge me because of my size. <laughs> Don't judge me because of my size. It's genetic. <laughs> You're just a fattest, or, or what's it called? Uh, sizest. Sizest, yeah, fattest. <laughs> fattest. All right. Your size is probably not the first thing people notice about you, unless you're being thin shamed. <laughs> well, doesn't that just refute this whole article? So if you're fat, it usually is the first thing people notice about you. Yes, I will give you that. Right, but, right, but that's there's always a first thing to notice, and it's whatever stands out. And if <laughs> whatever when sticks I, out, whenever I waddle up to somebody, I assume the first <laughs> thing they think is, "Wow, this guy is a large human being." <laughs> <laughs> this guy's probably hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, throw out a steak. <laughs> Put some uh, peanut butter on a spoon. That'll distract him. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, number three. When you're at the grocery store, people don't comment on the food selection in your cart in the name of trying to be helpful. That has never happened, ever, to that anybody. Ha- that has happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm dead serious. I was buying a fucking uh, Otis spunk face muffin. You know what I'm talking about? Those muffins with the fucking gay-ass name. Otis Spunkmeyer? Yeah. So I was buying one of those, and uh, somebody in line behind me said, you know how many calories are in those? Those are so bad for you. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) All right. Well, anyways, it's never happened to me because I I would punch them in the fucking head, right in their soft head. (laughs) Apparently you're not fat enough. (laughs) Or they just look at me and think, yeah, don't bother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I ain't going to say shit. He already knows. <laughs> uh, your health insurance rates are not higher than everyone else's. Mine are lower than everybody else's because of my job. It, uh, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Nope. It doesn't. <laughs> Way to add to the show. I can't, I, can't, I can't relate to this one, so. <laughs> well, don't you think that that people that are a health risk should pay higher insurance premiums? Uh, I think health insurance, though, this goes right back into something else. I, I think health insurance is a fucking scam, but with the system that we have, yes, yes, I do think that. Well, okay, yeah. So I don't think health insurance is a scam. I think that the entire medical insurance, complex medical, yeah. health care system is a scam. Right. Um, you can expect to pay reasonable prices for your clothing. That's because it uses less material. And, Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All my clothes have to be reinforced with rebar. Of course they're going to cost more. <laughs> last, last thing is you want my fucking pants splitting open mid-stride. <laughs> Shit spilling out everywhere. <laughs> oh, fuck. You can expect to find your clothing size sold locally. Everybody's so I, clothing size is sold locally. Nope, if not you, true. If you if you can't find your clothing size locally, you, they, don't they go up to like five X everywhere? If you're more than a fucking five X, th- that's a totally different conversation, don't you think? So it no, they don't go up to five X locally. There's a lot of stores that I can't buy clothes in. A lot of stores. There's a lot of stores that I can't buy clothes in. So fucking what? 
you don't understand what it's like. I to, I don't. So the we right just, just, the right response to that is then lose weight. If you want to buy clothes at JC Penney's, like me, I, I can't go to well, actually I, I just bought a suit at JC Penney's. Um, <laughs> See, so you just killed your own argument. <laughs> uh, what uh fucking Von Mar. I, I can't I can't go to Victoria's Secret and buy something <laughs> that'll fit me. The crotch is always too big. <laughs> Anyway, so the right answer to that is to lose weight. Um, <laughs> the right answer to every one of these is to lose weight. Shut up, you fattest. <laughs> Only I can say it. Some of my f- best friends are fat or something. <laughs> All right. You can uh, expect to find clothing in the latest styles and colors instead of colorless, shapeless, and outdated styles meant to hide your body. All clothes are meant to hide your body. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, you that's like, by definition, that's what they are. <laughs> Well, well, you don't receive suggestions from your friends and family to join Weight Watchers or any other weight loss program. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I don't. You're right. <laughs> maybe it's because people don't care about me if I die. But nobody has ever, <laughs> none of my friends and or family have ever come up to me and said, you know, you should think about Weight Watchers. <laughs> Right off the bat. <laughs> hey, I got this friend Jenny Craig you should meet. <laughs> um, when you go to the doctor, they don't suspect diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol or other weight-related diagnosis as the first most likely diagnosis. Weight-related. <laughs> You're fucking fat. <laughs> what do you think? Well, Doc, I'm fat, but don't suggest that I change my lifestyle whatsoever. <laughs> God, people are so... Not only are you fat, but you're stupid, too. That's, like, the first thing I think of. As soon as somebody... I see somebody that's fat, as soon as I see them do anything, I suspect it must be the diabetes. <laughs> they caught the diabetes. <laughs> they, if if you see some fat fuck driving and they don't put on their turn signal, it's the diabetes. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, you don't get told you have such a pretty handsome face, implying if you only lose weight, you could be more attractive. I've You're never right. Been told I, I, I don't get told face. that. <laughs> Remember, I'm the homely one. <laughs> <laughs> People do not assume that you are lazy based solely on your size. Oh, it's because I'm lazy. They assume I'm lazy because they've met me. <laughs> uh, You're not the brunt of jokes for countless numbers of comedians. Because I'm not that lucky. That'd be great. If Jerry Seinfeld was telling jokes about me, maybe his career would have taken off. What's the deal with the fugly people? <laughs> See? That's funny. <laughs> What's the deal with the fans of Bukaki? <laughs> See, how's that See? feel, that's, fucker? That's great. How's that feel, fucker? <laughs> <clears throat> Number 13. Airlines won't charge you extra to fly. That's because they burn more fuel. And, and because you take up you two have, seats. <laughs> yeah, or or you have to take up two seats. Uh, number 14, you are not perceived as looking sloppy or unprofessional based on your size. It, if you're fat, you look sloppy. Yeah. That's, that's, just, that's just a fucking, that's the way it is. So, I mean, that that is 100% true. And, and so I know, you know, because as part of my job, I have to dress business casual, I guess. Sure. And... I'll, it's funny because I'll see somebody wearing a similar outfit, you know, whether it's khakis and a dress shirt and, yeah. you know, and I'll see them and then I, I like reflect that on myself like, oh, so that must be how I look. And yeah. then I, I go into the bathroom and like one of my, like my shirt tails untucked and <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sweaty you and got, gross looking. You got gravy, sta- gravy stains on your shirt. <laughs> I'm assuming all fat people have gravy stains on their shirt. <laughs> I got diabetes stains coming, just pouring everywhere. <laughs> do you put gravy in your coffee usually? <laughs> I, I do put a little coffee in my gravy. That's cool. Uh, you can eat what you want, when you want, in public, and not have others judge you or make assumptions about your eating habits. Everybody judges everybody all the time. No, see, I, I disagree with that. I, I do disagree with that. I think that we we talked about this not that long ago. When you're at a buffet and you see a skinny person and they go up and they get a plate, 
like a salad. They're carrying two plates. One's a salad and one's got food on it, right? Yeah. You don't even think yeah. about it. But when you see a right. fat person and they come back and they've got two plates and they've both got food on it, your first thing is, fuck, just one plate at a time, you fat bastard. <laughs> And so, then when you see him go up again and again and again, it's like, oh, now I get it. So it's, when I, it's when genetics. I, when I'm out, I'll be drinking a Mountain Dew, Fountain Pop, Mountain Dew, and I'll see a fat person drinking a Mountain Dew. And in my head, I think, do you really need to drink that fucking Mountain Dew <laughs> as I'm drinking Mountain Dew? <laughs> but that's just because I'm an asshole. <laughs> no, no, that's normal. And that's. So that's not normal. I'm drinking a Mountain Dew, judging somebody else for drinking a Mountain Dew. Yes, but you're obviously getting enough exercise throughout the week that you're burning calories and and you are able to have whatever it is that you eat and it and it not stick to your didn't ass. I, didn't I just tell you I'm fat? I have a, I have a gut that like a beer gut, but I don't drink beer. I'm fat. <laughs> Who am I to judge anybody for drinking Mountain Dew? <laughs> All right, number 16. You can walk out of a gas station with a box of donuts and not have people yell at you to lay off them donuts, fatty. (laughs) In parentheses, it says this actually happened to one of my friends. I call bullshit. Um, I don't. That's awesome. I'm going to start doing that. (laughs) Lay off them donuts, fatty. And and they don't even have to be carrying donuts. No, I'm just going to drive by. (laughs) Just drive by and yell out my window. You know what? Maybe, maybe that's the name of our 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 next shirt. Maybe that's what we put on there. <laughs> Lay off them donuts, fatty. You know what? I think I got to make a note of that because that's the name it, of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Lay off them donuts, fatty. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm not gonna have time to listen to this. It's just going up. When I, oh. Yep. All right. You want to read the next one while I'm writing here? People don't have to ask. People don't ask your partners what it's like to have sex with you because of your size. (laughs) Has anybody ever asked your wife what's it like to have sex with a fat guy? (laughs) Oh, my God. That's awesome. Is that even a thing? That that big sweaty mess bouncing around on top of you. (laughs) Oh, my God. Your body type isn't sexually fetishized. What? Yes, it is. Does somebody really have a... (laughs) <laughs> does, does somebody really have a, a fat fetish? Is that what it is? Fat objectification fetishism. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> you mean disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> You're more likely to get a raise or promotion at work than someone who is fat. That's true. <sighs> you think? Yeah, it's proven that if you're fat, you're lazy. And if you're lazy, you're not going to get a raise. <laughs> proven they did studies on it <laughs> yeah there's a fucking spreadsheet somewhere that shows that uh friends don't describe you to others using a qualifier example he's kind of heavy but really nice <laughs> say that about doug doug's kind of fat but he's a pretty nice guy <laughs> that's how i describe you <laughs> nobody nobody ever said hold on ah. nobody ever says that nobody ever says doug's nice uh but he's big or whatever, whatever you said. Yeah. I, I he's kind of t- heavy, but really nice. Heavy like a fork truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not, he's not boyfriend material, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I love this one. The media doesn't describe your body shape as part of an epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> if you're so fat that you're part of the epidemic, <laughs> I want to know how fat the person is that wrote this. That makes all the difference. If she's like 10 pounds overweight. (laughs) You can choose to not be preoccupied with your size and shape because you have other priorities and won't be judged. What? (laughs) I don't, I don't understand that one. This person is huge. She's she's gotta be. (laughs) She's gotta be Shannon Ridgeway. Follow. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look for her. That's what I'm doing right now. All She's right. not big at all. Seriously. Are you fucking kidding me? No, this girl is. Oh, there's one that's fat. <laughs> oh, what? You're just looking at random people now. 
I just put it into Google image search and look for anybody with the name Shannon Ridgeway. That's fat. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So I'm going to follow her. Um, Everyday feminism. We'll type that in there. Cause I would like to tag her when we talk about this, but her shit's protected. Anyway. Oh, all right. That's, that's too bad. <clears throat> all right. What do you say? We get this shit wrapped up here. Yeah. Bye. Oh, uh, <coughs> wanna... God damn it. What? Talk while I'm, I'm, I'm panicking here. What? <laughs> why, why are you panicking? <laughs> Cause I'm trying to keep the momentum of the show going. Uh, well, so we gave away the shirt. That. There's no uh, fucking momentum. Uh, don't forget to go to our website. Who's right. Podcast.com. Uh, again, as always, thank you, Peter Norica for the theme song. And now we're going to play a song by a guy called Skinny Wizard. It's called Guy Like Me. Um, so I, I asked him, if, is there anything that you want me to let everybody know when we play? I'm going to read what he wrote. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read part of what he wrote. Oh, you can't read the whole thing. I can. I just don't know what it says. I don't understand it. I don't. I don't speak wizard. Um, <laughs> hey, and what's with what's with his blah, 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 blah. what's with his fucking name anyway? Skinny wizard. What's he got yeah. against fat wizards? Yeah, All really, wizards matter. On. All <laughs> wizards matter. You fat sack of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wait, know what? He's skinny. Never mind. We shouldn't play his music. He's promoting fat wizard hate. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and we won't have that. Oh, I'll have it. All right. So what it says is uh, you could laugh. I, I, said, I said, is there anything you want us to, us to tell or talk about, whatever? And he said, you could laugh at my Ganesh Ganapati mantra. Do you know what the fuck that means? I don't, I don't know, know if it's any a, three of those. I don't, I don't know what any three of those words mean. <laughs> I'm going to, I assume maybe he just had autocorrected something wrong All or right. something. But let's see what See what Google says. <laughs> Got 10 mantras for all problems in life. Whatever. Fuck it. I don't care. Uh, here's Skinny <laughs> Wizard. One, two, three. Well, I can see you from across the room Looking at me Looking at you You got a drink in your hand
Microsoft deal. <laughs>